Yo, what's up? It's your boy DJL7. As you know, I have a bunch of different activists on my show. Now, this lady over here is actually quite interesting. I met her at several live events, but you're going to find out more from her directly. I'm happy to bring you another story of actually an on-the-ground activist right here that you ain't hearing about from the regular media, but who's putting in work consistently that I've seen around. So, um, I'm going to let her introduce herself, though. Say what's up. Okay, um, Roxanne Delgado. We started a campaign not against a homeless shelter because I'm not against the homeless and never would I ever imagine being against a homeless shelter. What was against is that Community Board 11 knew about this shelter but decided on its own accord not to inform the community. And that's considered environmental injustice when the, the powers that be did not inform the community about issues that impacts the, their community. So we launched this campaign uh, exposing Community Board 11 for not community to the community about this homeless shelter coming and it's not an appropriate spot it's nearby all the schools so we've been starting this campaign since january 9th and we got lots of people involved lots of awareness many people upset and people do become upset when you're not informed of things when you expect something you don't become scared you don't think of the worst but when something's hidden from you you imagine the worst possibilities and that's what community board 11 did to this community they did not inform the community which i'm against okay just to let you guys know, actually, um, I am quite actually uh, sympathetic to uh, this lady's concerns. As you know, I am a homeless advocate, but I know that you may say like, you know, oh, it sounds disturbing, right? A community wants to get rid of the homeless shelter. But the fact of the matter that I've talked about earlier, Section 8 is actually a trap. They'll put the homeless shelter into a community that's already dealing with drug problems, poverty, huge issues. But the homeless shelters, you notice, don't ever go into the rich communities. That's why you notice that she talked about how the fact they try to sneak it in there, right? Because they actually try to create communities of poverty. They try to create communities where, you know, you don't have a chance and they take already burdened communities and they sink them in there. And that's usually the communities that are going to have exactly like you said before, environmental problems. If you look at Newburgh, New York, right? They have huge environmental problems and that's where the affordable housing is being built. And they're trying to shuttle people who are coming out of prison to go straight into those communities, primarily black and Mexican communities, to further you know um abandon them which is horrible so um i understand your fight right there and a lot of people watching youtube and stuff like that they want a real knee jerk real easy solutions to everything five minute solutions they don't really take time to understand either the and i speak as a homeless person as a homeless advocate what she's saying makes sense and there needs to be a more nuanced understanding and discussion of this issue rather than just saying you know she's against homeless people which will be a knee-jerk reaction. I respect you for your move there. You know, people need to really understand your motivations more, which are real, which are real. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so, on the environmental side, what are you doing again? Because you said environmental as well, right? Yeah, uh, environmental injustice, is, the definition is when decisions are made that impacts the community that had no notice or any input in that decision. And what if those decisions are positive or negative? The fact that you would exclude the community that's impacted, decision made by outsiders who don't have understanding community, is environmental injustice. Okay. Um, just soon it's cold as shit today in New York City. There's fucking snow everywhere. That's why she's indoors at the Starbucks. It is what it is. You know, we're just making um, do it how we can, as we can. That's just the, you know, real street activists right there. So um, the, fa the fact of the matter is um, actually... What have you, there's a lot of people out there who talk about um, their ideas, right? But they have, what, what about accomplishments, right? What are you most proud of accomplishing throughout your career as an activist? I want um, the community to have real democracy. And not just taking photo ops with the elected, but having a say. Because we, they represent us, but they seem to, once they're in office, they, we're no longer um, seen or heard by them. Yeah. And this starts from the ground up, and that's community boards. Community boards should be apolitical and should be engaged in the community. But it seems like some community boards are more about self-serving and trying to uh, embrace themselves with the uh, political electives. And that's an issue because democracy grows from the groups up, from the ground up. And when our community board is dysfunctional, it explains why our community is in the state as it is. Because community boards can stand up for um, against electives on behalf of the community, okay. but they don't use that resources to do so, and so that's what, a big issue for us. So, what are you doing with the community board? Sorry, what? what? What are you doing with the community board? You doing things with your local community board? 
Or are you doing things to hold them accountable? What are you doing with them? I'm in the 2411. Okay. So what do you do there? I think, well, I think people should apply for the community board to begin with. The, the, the deadline is March 1st. Okay. So now I actually have community. worked, okay, I work with community boards, right? Yeah. So um, some of the ways that community boards actually, one of the things that they do is just so you know, you have uh, federal taxes, you have state taxes, and you also have city taxes. And city taxes go to uh, fund huge things such as the New York City Police. You also have uh, Home and Health Services. You also have Department of the Aging, which is the New York City branch. You also have the homeless shelters. You, there's a lot of funding that comes from right parks, right? That's also the city. So the thing is that the community board gets to like uh, have some say as mm -hmm. the grants that go out to the community for like you know um, nursing homes. And nursing homes are huge uh, areas of political activity that are going on. Um, I definitely feel like there's some corruption going on there, but community board actually has a huge place in what's going on. So, um, did I miss anything or anything else that's really, uh, you know, mostly the grant, um, you know, which are millions of dollars, right? There's, they're helping to steer those things. That's where the community board of New York city is, as I interacted it, uh, but maybe you have some other, um, w what are you working on specifically? Anything in particular or what happened recently? Anything? Well, like you said, community boards may be advisory, but they actually have more power than people think they do. Yeah. They direct yeah. where the resources go. Ex just exactly right. Yeah. They actually direct where, and, and agencies actually do pay mind to community boards because mm -hmm. they assume that community board is, is speaking on behalf of the community. Absolutely. That's actually community boards are used to manufacture consent in many ways. And, but sometimes actors like yourself get in and then they're no. in for a world of hurt, which is great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's actually community board is actually a shield between um, a shield, a wall between the democracy. It's a wall between the people and the powers that be. Mm -hmm. And that's you not good. <laughs> you got it. I actually don't support community boards in general. I think we shouldn't have community boards. But in order for to make the changes that we need, we need more people who are independent to join the community board to change it. Because unfortunately, community boards are here to stay, whether we like it or not. Hmm. I, I don't like that, yeah. community. No, I do not think we should have a community board. Uh, many people who are on the community board don't reflect the community, not just demographically, but income level, uh, education-wise. Um, the, it's they're age elites. discrimination. They're elites. And they're people who are connected. They're people with money. All their friends are people with money. And they leave us to fucking eat the dirt and the shit. And it's fucking horrible, exactly. yeah? yeah. And and what upsets me more is that we have three board members that let's say that live in Morris Park and they're making decisions on behalf of the community of Pelham Parkway, but most of them never step, step foot on Pelham Parkway and have no right to speak on our behalf. That's it's a community that knows best what's for their what's for their community. That's this is why we have this homeless shelter going on. Because they didn't want it in their area, they want it over here. And that's why I'm I'm very sad that I have to do a campaign against a homeless shelter because I we protect the most vulnerable people in our in society. We don't want to be against homeless shelters. Yeah. But the way it was done and how it's um, against uh, around the community, non-informing the community, doing it in a way that's their shenanigans, and I cannot stand for that. We have to when something comes down neighborhood, it has to go to the community, not to a community board. The, the fact of the matter is, uh, this is God's truth. This is really a modern day form of apartheid. Certain communities are plan are destined to succeed. And certain destinies are destined to fail and plan to fail. And it's ridiculous. So I feel I, I'm in part of your struggle and I get 100 percent. And also notice that, right, um, the things that she's talking about, she's really taking on the fight in ways that the TV cannot cover because all the commercial interests. Right. Remember, the community board. Right. They're going to be friends with the guy. At the, they're going to be friends with the reporters. They're going to be friends with the TV executives. Right. Those are their buddies. That's who they go to dinner with not people like us so really um she's out here um and i've seen you at multiple events so that's dope as hell right so what's your um so some people right they come from a by the way what's your background are you well my mom is bolivian and my dad's venezuelan but i was oh, born cool. in i was born in brooklyn so okay my uh one of my girlfriends for a long long time was venezuelan so chevre this is cool right yeah that's a venezuelan thing either way yeah all right uh, what do they have the pre pre yeah I, I i love uh what's the food again i forgot yeah the, the I, I don't know much of the right? culture one day we'll go for that yeah one day i'll take you for venezuelan let's go yeah let's go i like that stuff anyways let's go. yeah all right so 
Um, all right. Hmm. So some people, they, they come from different schools of thought. You got your Marxist-Leninists, right? You got your people that are Black Panthers, right? Or so maybe you come from a, maybe someone was influential to you in this whole activist game. Maybe not. Maybe you, you just synthesized it more on what, where do, what's your background if people want to kind of like understand you? Uh, when I was, you know, I became involved with the environmental animal rights issues. And I realized how many of us were so supportive of issues, but nothing got through the city council because of the, the lack of um, power, the lack of uh, political uh, democracy. And when did this happen? Did this start in high school? Like 15 years ago. 15 years ago? Okay. So and did some did some event trigger this or were you just out of college or like what, what, why were you asking these questions or what happened? Well, what happened was I became involved in some issues that I care about and we did, um, petitioning, uh, door knocking, um, letters to the editors. We're doing everything that people say we should do when you organize. Okay. And we have lots of people in support and nothing gets done because we have electives that for some reason, our structure doesn't empower the people, no matter how much we get together. And I, that's what I'm saying. Whether you're for environmental rights, tenant rights, human rights, animal rights, we're all coming through the same uh, roadblocks. Yeah. Nothing that we need is getting done. Exactly. And it's not because of us. And this is why I fight against structures that actually disempower people. So I became more where I'm not little like one rights, like animal rights, uh, environmental rights, tenant rights. Now more like trying to stop these structures that disempower people from getting what they want. Whether they, I agree with them or not, we should have democracy. We should have the majority of people be able to have a say in, in what, how the city is run. And when I see how this community board did this, how they disempower people by not giving notice of what's happening, by not uh, really opening their meetings to the public, not informing us. And this and not informing people is the best way to disempower people because information is power. Absolutely. But this is how I became involved with this issue. It's just that for many years we've been I've been involved with different groups, with myself, and we can't get things done. It's not because of lack of hard work or lack of passion. It's the structure that we have here that keeps us from getting these things done because for some reason, we have, don't have people that that care for things that uh, is best for this uh, for this city or for this country or for this whole world. Yeah. So. And yeah. That's why I got involved with this um, issue now. I've been involved with trying to open the primaries instead of having uh, partisan primaries, open primaries. Okay. Uh, have nonpartisan elections because too much we have these electors are more about protecting their seat than about doing things right. And, yeah, but yeah, then right. it starts from the ground, then, but it starts with commute boards. Okay. Even so, our commute board stops us from doing things. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to the next question. Um, this question once, um, you know, as in terms of like, do you follow someone else's like uh, philosophies? It sounds like you don't, which is fine, yeah. right? You, you kind of like develop this from your own, from your own work, personal work and from your own observations, which I think is powerful. Mm -hmm. Now my next question is, okay, so, and it's good that you actually mentioned that you've been a part of different organizations, right? <laughs> So the thing is that a lot of times when people end up joining these activist organizations, their passion is mm -hmm. redirected to be used for someone else's bullshit. You know what I mean? Like either, do, oh, you're passionate about this topic, elect me, and then I'll never talk to you again. Some bullshit exactly. like that. You know what I mean? So how do we, um, w some organizations like, you know, uh, Justice Democrats, whatever, right? Like you could see the corporate influence. You see some people there. So what are, what organizations, right? Um, have you been a part of that you think, what are some best practices, right? Or what, if I was a volunteer and I started working for an organization, they started acting funny, what could I watch out for? You know what I mean? And how, right, from your experience, you've been doing this 15 years, right? What have you learned that you can share with my other viewers who are activists like yourself? Because I, I seek people exactly like yourself, right? Who are, who are not covered by the media or the progressive media even. And let's share within ourselves. I'm, I'm actually going to DC at the end of the week if you're yeah because i don't know if you saw my latest video where i'm from the national action network again right yeah Pro, you saw me there right you know how i went over there well i'm there again and jamal bowman gave me props because over with the disabilities advocate mark we've been in front of city hall since january 2nd every day now we actually moved on to hochel's office uh, ongoing uh, protest we actually he agreed to get some disability stuff so the door opened for us to some other people because elections coming in 2022 to get these issues attended to again and you're right, it shouldn't be about some savior. I'm not trying to say it's just me. I'm saying Mark. I'm saying you. I'm going to help you. 
right yet yeah, i'll on my next newsletter which is coming out soon i have a thousand people on it i will mention you Thank right you. yeah if you could do the same thing for myself on your newsletter and instead of promoting saviors we're just going to strengthen ourselves each in the network you know what i mean and who's my network it's the people i interact with in real fucking life so if you're a candidate saying blah 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 that's nice you're not part of the network bro you got no time for me that's nice i'm sorry man you're saying the nice things that's nice but actually i've been on the streets with you i work with you you know what i mean we doing things together you in my network so I'm going to share stuff with you. You get what I mean? And my time with you and my resources and my energy with you. And all those hey. other dudes, who gives a fuck about them? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think you're with me, right? You get exactly what I'm saying. No, I agree. And I think um, one of the things I would um, suggest is people running for office. Yeah. Because what the worst thing that uh, any elected test is a primary. Okay. They don't like primaries because they have to run on their record and they have to shake, they have to go out there and meet the constituents for votes again. Okay. So primary people is very good. I hope people uh, run for assembly and state because March is the petitioning and June is the election. I'm gonna so talk, just, we have plans for that that are active right now. I'm gonna tell you more about run. that. Yeah. Just run because even if you don't think you have a chance of winning, you may, you may win. And if you don't win, you win because you get these electors out the door and start talking to the people and, and the people tell them how they feel. You know, I have a been... whole bunch of unique uh, stuff actually in line to help people run. I would love yeah. to help you run, right? Actually, if you see these flyers right here, I'm also flying the project right now. <laughs> yeah. And now you're going to love this, right? Yeah, it doesn't say believe in a politician or a party or anything. It says believe in yourself, yourself. You run, rep my block. You rep your own block. Exactly I... what you're talking about, right? Yeah, not like me, not my system. Fuck all that, right? Yeah. We're going to put the tools in your hands. We actually FOIA requested all the voters in all the districts, right? We could put okay. all the voters and send them right to you so you know who's voting in your particular district. And you can just take over. You know what I mean? Fuck it. We're going to put the tools right in your hands. Fuck, fuck all these other assholes. Yeah. Well, I don't plan to run, but I plan to help some people run. Yeah. And I think people need to not, people say not voting is the solution. No, you have to vote. That's, That's another problem. Yeah. People not voting, and basically the small voting block is putting these people in office that shouldn't be in office. Yeah. So we really need to start voting, and we should start running. And okay. then uh, join your committee boards. Hell yeah. My next question, okay, I have another, damn, which is crazy. Okay, we have to talk that later. I'm going to have to call you back, all right? I'm so sorry. I'm in the middle of the interview. Yeah, right, I'm so sorry. Okay. Shit is crazy, you know what I mean? That's what being <laughs> active is all about. Anyways. So... Okay, so the thing is that activists, right, another thing is that a lot of activists want to be effective. They're passionate about some shit, right, and the, the normal fucking channels didn't work for them, so they had to become an activist, you know what I mean? So now, yeah. a lot of activists, sometimes activists are joining organizations, and they find themselves doing something, and they feel like they're wasting their time. Sometimes activists, right, um, they want to learn how to be effective, right, they see other people aren't really attending their issues, they want to know what's effective. So you've been doing this for 15 years, what do you think are the most effective things that activists can do? With your, and notice that every other person that I've interviewed who's an activist like yourself, I've asked them the same question. So you can watch my online activist interview series and just see what a whole Judith uh, from the from the Workers' World Party uh, interviewed a bunch of candidates, right? A, a different activist, just like this lady right here. I'd say she's one of the most realest ones that I've had on the channel yet. So I hope you guys appreciate this interview right here. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a great question, right? What are the most effective things that activists can do from your experience? Uh, I wish, you know, I've been involved so long and... I've been, to, I've been a big thorn in people's side, but I haven't made the changes that are needed. Yeah. So I am a pest to the electors. I am a pest to the power that be. But being a pest really doesn't get much done. I think, looking back, I think people, we should have been more involved politically, getting people to run for office, yeah. to join the community board. And, um, you know, each community is different. Our community is very low income. We don't have, they don't really don't have access to internet. And if, even if they have access to internet, they don't know how to use uh, social media. So that kind of is uh, puts us at disadvantage because you could do a lot, a lot more with little money on social media. So in our area, that that's not possible. But social media is a strong, strong power too. If your community is very, is very uh, tech, tech savvy or it's, a, it's a, you use of social media, which some communities do. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal to you a little something that like you know I know you've been fighting for a long time. I know it's been shitty, but the fact of the matter is that 
the whole media and the people know the progressive media is whack too because they know they're not covering like the real shit and they see the hollowness in it honestly mm-hmm. things are about to change and what you've done is right i know you feel like you might have wasted some time no what you did was you built credibility for yourself just like bernie sanders spent a lot of time right years decades right fighting right and nobody listened to him and they thought he was a joke you know what i mean you've been doing the same thing so mm-hmm. i'm telling you right yeah like people like me are recognizing you know what mm-hmm. i mean so that's why i'm excited to work with you so all that fake shit those titles that are given to them by the elites you know what i mean and and like those interviews by the credibilities and the, that those fake ass views that are built on the bullshit mm-hmm. so fucking what you know what i mean they that's all paid for by commercial interests i don't give a fuck about them so yo i'm really excited to meet you you know what i mean and i see you as uh the, fa- the fact that you are where you are, the fact that you haven't made progress, look, we ain't fighting nothing easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm looking for people exactly like you because honestly, the people that are thrust into the front of our movement, let's be honest, some of them fake as shit. And they're not getting shit done either, really, with all that they've been given. You get what I mean? No, it's true. I mean, yeah. well, we can't, you know, we can't stop. We have, we can't stop fighting. Oh, I'm fighting like a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. <laughs> and um, it just would be nice if more people got involved. It's just like, it's just a few of us out there, really, really out there. Yo, and I, I got know we some have... super duper exciting programs coming up that I'm going to tell you besides the one about like we're going to DC at the end of the week. Yo, you want to come with us? No, right now um, my ha- my table's full with this off uh, campaign. I understand. I understand. Well, it's really for this. I have no idea. I don't sleep. I don't eat anymore. Which campaign it's, are you working on? Huh? Which well, campaign are you first working of all, we're still fighting for our trees that parks took away. Oh, the East River Park thing? Or no? No, no. I'm in the Pelham Parkway. You guys should gang up with the East River Park people. Oh, I've, I've been to, to their rallies. They're amazing. They're an amazing group. They are. But we also got to get support for Pelham Parkway, right? It can't be just yeah, so Park. We got to help each other. I'm fighting my own battle in my own community. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can be going everywhere. And now with this homeless shelter with Community Born 11, it means like the time that I have is very limited. I'm going to start helping out with that. I'm a, I'm a motherfucker and you're going to find yeah. out. Yeah. But it's, okay. it's just, you know, and that's what we have to do. We have to, because there's a lot of issue with Parks Department too. Parks Department is the worst agency possible. For agencies that's supposed to oversee our parkland, they have no, they don't care about protecting our parkland. The overdevelopment of our parks and removing trees, it's been going on not just, I mean, it's been a larger scale in the east side park, but it's it's going out everywhere. In every park they have removed trees to put uh, uh, plazas, to put ornamental trees. We don't have any more nature left. And they keep talking about environmental, uh, about climate change, global warming, but in all, in all city, we actually, um, uh, enhancing the problem with the environment by with our parkland. We're not preserving it, we're actually destroying it. It's, dep- it's depriving community of fresh air, cool air, of the wildlife, nature, sand. It's another issue we have to deal with in Palm Park, which we will address in March or April. It's been a big battle, it's been two years already. Uh-huh. Again, our electors don't help. They run on environmental issues, but where are they when we, they have environment? They go all over the state. Maybe. They go everywhere to talk about environmental issues, but they'll address the issues they have in their own backyard. Is there a way for us to maybe go over the city? Maybe we can get these, uh, the, the park, maybe we could get it re- recognized federally or recognized at a state level to uh, give the park or the trees protection? Maybe you I guys wish already tried that. Protections. I wish, but um, I don't know. Um, right now, I wish we had a new parks commissioner. That's another problem. We don't have a good park commissioner. You know, an interesting idea. You've you probably already heard of it, right? Yeah, I'm probably speaking to the choir right here. But someone said they had the idea of naming the trees, right? Yeah. So the thing is that the next tree you find out that they're going to cut down, right? Call it the fucking, call it, call it the Mayor Adams tree, right? And dedicate the tree in his honor. And then mm-hmm. let the city cut that one down. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Hey, not too many people have the time to be standing near a tree all day. Yeah. When they cut down trees, they're going to cut down the trees. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. It's just and that's, and about, yeah. the fact that we have uh, the electives, the state, city, federal, watch out for us. stand yeah. by and allow it, that yeah. shows who they are. Okay. So I'm going to ask another question right quick. Um, so the thing is, uh, you are... Um, I'm sorry, give me a second, I'm trying to remember. Uh, 
I asked, I asked the organization the question. Okay, so uh, you've been part of a bunch of different organizations, right? Yeah. What are so some, what? You've been part of a bunch of different organizations. <gasps> yeah, right? a few. Yeah. And you've touched it across uh, different, you know, because you're just going to end up doing that. Like you already talked about like different parts, aspects of mm -hmm. one activism touches another, right? So you mm -hmm. had to interact with a lot of groups. What are some of the best practices that you've seen in organizations? Because a lot of organizations I feel um, don't get a lot done or mm -hmm. the, the, the people in charge are more concerned with making excuses or fucking, you know, keeping everybody calm instead of actually making progress. Mm -hmm. So how, right, when you've maybe been some organizations that you feel are more effective than others, what were some of the things, right, that they did to be more effective than the other groups? I think uh, compiling a good, good list of names, mailing lists, phone numbers, um, keeping people up to date and giving people responsibility so that they, they seem like they're part of it and they're, they're not just following you. Because people don't like, some people like to follow, but others, you know, they like to be uh, engaged, to be part of the, the campaign or issue fighting for. So having compiling a good list of names with phone numbers, yeah. uh, trying to assess people's best ability because everyone has something to contribute, no matter who they are. As Everybody as has something to contribute. I like that a lot. As an activist too, right? You've outlived organizations and causes. Things have come and gone. So besides also, right, uh, helping the organization build their mailing list and helping the, helping them also remember you yourself from an organization investing yourself. DGL7 has its own mailing list of about um, like about a thousand people. Once again, I will actually um, you know shoot your information to my mailing list I, and within my network, people that I actually work with, I will start, share that out right and try to promote them and get things going here. Hopefully, we can make some progress here. Yes, yes, please. But the, one of the weakness I have and I haven't been able to overcome is fundraising. And that's one of the things that makes a, a group grow is money. Unfortunately, people could take you so far, but you need money. Let me, okay, let me tell you another thing, right? Yeah. Now, the fact of the matter is I'm here, out here fighting the good fight too. And right now I'm with this other group called People's Party and the, the leaders scammed a whole bunch of money and the people who are, you know, um, who are middle class, okay? They want to just let it go. They want to just start a new organization, right? Yeah. And they want to leave us poor people out here to do all the work and suffer and sweat while the corporate Volunteers, exactly. are getting the big time money. You know what I mean? Exactly. So we got to go out here and scrap, right? In our spare time and fucking Starbucks at the back of Starbucks, hustling, trying to find exactly. any way to make it work. You know what I mean? Nah, you middle class motherfuckers have to help us. You got to help us fight. You know what I mean? We can't do this shit on just fucking blood and guts and fucking the struggle alone and hiding out in fucking the back of Starbucks, motherfucker. You know what I mean? We need help out here. So the funding and shit, unfortunately, goes a lot. Of, if you watch the slebs, a lot of the money and support goes to people just saying what we at, what they about, what we actually doing. And none of them is poor. It's fucking garbage. You know what I mean? But don't worry no. about that. I'm here. Yo, and another thing that I got, just so you know, I got people like yourself that I'm talking to people in California, Oregon. New York City has 8.5 million people. And by the way, Brooklyn Cable Access will put your stuff on. You don't even have to live in Brooklyn. You could access mm -hmm. a large market and get your program. I think about 30 minutes. You can provide one regularly to them. They'll mm -hmm. put it out there. You could have a talk show on your stuff. Not only that, but New York has 8.5 million. I also have contacts in California. LA is 4 million. Chicago is mm -hmm. 2 million. We can have the three largest markets and be pumping on Brooklyn uh, on cable access in all three locations and more. I got people in Texas and Seattle and Florida and Idaho and Illinois and Oregon. Yo, we could be in all those markets right now. You know what I mean? So instead of taking what they give us, we, uh, we can move out, you know? So I definitely, um, we got a lot of things to talk about besides like the, the things I got coming up with uh, those lawmakers. I will document the fact that I took these to them. And give that to you so you can know that your issue was definitely brought to these lawmakers and there's no, they can't escape that fact. You get what I mean? Um, also, there's something called Rep My Block. Have you heard about the, uh, the in the band? Yeah, like, yes. They took over the thing. Rep My Block actually, uh, the, the city county committee election is coming up in March. And the, out of the elected officials, fully one third of them leave early. They resign, they're retired, they, they got, they, they get, they, there's a lawsuit, they got to leave. They're not elected. The county committee puts them into place. I know. So if you run for county committee, we can take over together. You know what I mean? 
county yeah. committee is a lot of numbers. You have to have a lot of people to um I got 10,000 flyers. I will come out to Pelham Parkway projects, right? Yeah, this one over here. This flyer is two-sided. One-sided says to get involved in the process with the Rep My Block. The other one says to about the, how public housing is being destroyed and about how they're robbing them. So that's another part of my thing. So I'm exclusively in the project handing out these flyers. You can also give me your flyer for Pelham Parkway. I'll, ha I'll hand out both of them at the same time. Fuck it. I'm already there. I don't give a fuck, right? And... um. I think that our a lot of things that we say seems aligned as in terms of like promoting democracy and stuff like that. So, fuck it, why not? You know what I mean? So we could set that up. Probably uh, I'm going to, I think Albany, I know DC on Thursday, <laughs> um, and we're gonna be there through the weekend. Yeah, but before then, I need to get my lazy fucking non cold fucking loving ass and walk my ass out to the projects and hand out these flyers. So. Um, if I hit, let it, me know. Yeah, Pelham Parkway could happen real soon. Honestly, I'm in every project. You you see my videos, right? South Jamaica Queens, fucking Linden, Lincoln, uh, mm -hmm. yo, uh, Wagner houses. I hung a huge, you know, the Triborough Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, let's go there and hang a huge sign off to get like uh to get uh information about you know your issue. We'll we'll set that up too. All right, we're gonna do that soon. That's gonna be a good sign. All right. So now the thing is that um, honestly. Just so you know, I'm a big fan of this lady. I want you guys to, uh, that are, that my viewers, I want you to check her out. So she's gonna share right now. What what's you have like? Um, do you put stuff out on Facebook, on Twitter? Share your social yes. media so people can find out more about what you're working on. Yes, please. Thank you so much. On Facebook, it's called Friends of Pelham Parkway, and on Instagram, it's Pelham Parkway Friends. And right now, we're dealing with the issue with Community Board 11 disempowering the people with mis with no information. But then we'll return to our issue regarding the trees because we don't have any trees in Pelham Parkway. The Parks Department just takes out trees with no, no notice or no, no compassion. It's like they don't respect the community. Okay, and, and another been going on quite a while. So people are gonna um, subscribe now, and what do they have to look forward to? You got like any like projects coming up real soon that people like you know uh, to watch out for? Not right now, but hopefully in spring we'll have some things going on. That long? Well, right now we're dealing with uh, community issues. Yeah, you're doing stuff right now. You, I called you the other day. You was handing out flyers all day long. That there's got to for yeah. eleven meeting. That's good. Well, the main thing is to join community boards, no matter where you live. Yeah, that's a big thing coming up now, right? That that's a, that's an exciting thing right there. Yeah. And um, but right cool. now we're having yeah. a meeting this coming Thursday, but it's more for those who live nearby the shelter, and then hopefully we'll restart the tree campaign maybe by. Um, Look, even April. if you don't, even if you don't live in Pelham Parkway. Right. The thing is, that I work with the Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Green Party, and the People's Party. I work with all of them. Right. Community organizations as well. So I know what's actually really going on. And the thing is that when, you, when if you go to that meeting, you're gonna learn about how the community interacts with the establishment in new ways. You should study these things, right, and be exposed to them in a broad context. Right. You can't just be in one echo chamber and then think you understand the world. You don't. So. I'll ch honestly, I got that stuff going on in D.C. I don't think I can make that meeting. I'm really sorry as hell. Maybe I could check it out on the bus or some shit. That would be fucking crazy. I, why the fuck not, right? Uh, but I definitely encourage you, right? We are all one fight. And if you're part of my network, right? Thank then thank I will you. appreciate, right, you helping out on this one. And you know I'll help you out with your stuff. Yes, you know yes. I'm, I'm for that. So either way, right, the more we help each other, the stronger we are. Your choice. Your choice, yeah? Okay. Well, hopefully in March, we'll have people running for office here. So I think uh, the March more people that run for either assembly or senate, the better. You know, I also respect, um, you know, this lady right here. I met her at the National Action Network when I was protesting Yang. Also, uh, when I was at the Yang uh, protest, not that she's anti-Yang because uh, she really wasn't. She was campaigning for other things, but she's on the front lines in the same places um, and the real front lines. So <laughs> this is actually... Um, you know, it's rare to see people in that space. So in terms of they say we'll recognize them real. Either way, this lady's showing up and she's ready to fight it, duke it out. So, you know, I'm saying that I, I'm putting this lady in my network regardless, because it doesn't matter if she has some different ideas, which I haven't heard yet. But even if she does, right, she's going to be a part of the process regardless. I don't need someone to think like me. I'm just going to see who's showing up and ready to do the work. And I know that together... That's what the future is going to be. That's it. So I'm excited to work with you, yeah? 
Thank you. Well, well I agree. Yeah. We have to create an environment, political environment, where people can uh, fight for the things they believe, whether we believe them or not. People should be able to have that freedom to get things that they and if they have the majority and they have the majority support, then why are they not getting the things that they fought for or I fought for? That's the issue. We don't have that uh, real democracy in, uh, in whether it's in the Bronx or Manhattan, Brooklyn. And the Bronx, I think, is the worst because people are very apathetic. But we have to break these little systems that keep people from being uh, active because people care. Unfortunately, a lot of people care. But because of the way the walls are built here, it kind of discourages people from getting involved. You know, that's what makes me sad. Yeah. There's a, what about um, Extinction Re Rebellion? I know like they're trying to go to, to East River Park. People are trying to get help from them. They're not very successful. No, they're very, they're, they're an amazing group of people. Will they help you? No, they have their hands full. We can't, I mean, they have to, they really have, no, no. I get that, okay. And oh, I think yeah. some of them should run for office. They should run against, uh, they should run for the open seat, assembly seat, and they should run against the Senate seat. Because I, I love their message, but I need to see them fucking helping you. You know what I mean? Like, no, they, they do a lot. They've been doing a lot on their own with no political meh, support. Meh. It's they put okay. a good fight. What, they're, what, they, what are they doing? They try legally, they try politically, they did rallies, they they're did direct the action. 26, they're fighting against, yeah, the United Nations stuff. I respect that, right? That's cool. But honestly, um, they find the big fights, and I, and, I, and I think that's necessary, but I'm here to take care of the little people like you. You get what I mean? So if what, what do you mean you ain't got time to help people in your backyard? What do you mean, right? How, how are we going to fix the world when you ain't fixed home yet? You get what I mean? So for me, right, like I, I, I'm not against them, but we're just focusing on different things. On, you get what I mean? So, yeah, but yeah, I could be everybody, for them too, you know, I guess. Yeah, yeah so we all have to. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But they gone through the same thing I did in Palm Parkway. Huh? Yeah, we all going through it. We all going through it. That's the truth. Yeah. Sometimes you're quite alone because all the status quo is against you. The park agency, the mayor, the city council, Yo, the media. You people over there, tell them I'm cool. Tell them I'm what's up. You know what I mean? Tell them, because I've been telling them the same thing I've been telling you. Um, either way, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're just, I haven't really seen a lot of local, but I've been disappointed too. Like, if you go to the meetings, you'll see a lot of people in the East River Park be like, yo, can you guys help us? And then they, they say they're going to help, but then nothing really happens. Some people don't have time. You'd be surprised how limited time is. You I was, know? I get that. I get that. But then they're not part of your network. I, I'm not mad if you don't have time. I'm not mad if you know you got to talk to the elites. I'm, I get that, right? I, they meet with NBC. The last time I went, went down there, they would meet some NBC press guy. They didn't have time to talk to me. Um, that's kind of fucking sad. And I, I hope, but I do hope one of them runs for office because they're very good. They have enough people involved. That. Yeah, you could you could like them if, if that is fine. But who, the one who's going to help you is me. Yeah, I know. Right, I, I got know. you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> Either way, that's how this game works, baby. I ain't mad at it, and I think you're real cool. I look forward to the next time we meet. And uh, mm -hmm. props to a real one out there doing real fucking work and on the front lines. God bless, all right? Anything else you want to say before we out? No, no. Thank you so much. Thank you, all right? Keep it up, all right? I'm going to hit you up soon. I need to get my ass out to fucking Pop Park. We have a project out there. It could happen soon, yeah. Yo, you down for it to happen? Maybe, like, maybe honestly, like, even today or tomorrow, I... Yo, if it doesn't happen here tomorrow, I've got other shit I got to do for the fucking, uh -huh. this, uh, this DC trip. I'm getting a vinyl banner. Yo, I have access to banners, t-shirts, flyers. You know what I mean? I have a table, folding table. I got clipboards. I have everything that any political fucking person would need. Uh -huh. Access to video gear, sound equipment. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I can make your next event pop, 100%. Mailing uh -huh. list, everything. Yeah? No. Uh -huh. I <laughs> All right. God bless. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Peace. Thank you. It's a dark day in our nation when high level authorities will seek to use every method to silence dissent. The truth must be told. And if you want the truth, you need to check out independent media producers just like myself, DJL7. You should subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications when I release a new video. The truth of these we words are all is beyond doubt. That includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course YouTube. 
Unfortunately, we have definitely seen that these mainstream outlets will cave to corporate interests, so we encourage you to join our independently moderated communities of Reddit and Discord. We also encourage you to subscribe to us on BitChute and Daily Motion so you can see the content that YouTube doesn't want us to let you see. Hey, now it's time for the most important part of the video. That's right. It's time for us to tell you about the Taking Action Group. Do you need an activist? Or maybe there's no activists around willing to help you with your cause and you need to learn to become an activist. That's exactly why we're here. Every week we get up with people from across the nation, in fact even sometimes internationally, and we develop strategies and a game plan to address the issues that are affecting all of us. Every week myself from New York City and of course my co-host Lisa from Los Angeles provide a coast-to-coast -coast perspective on what's going on in the country. If you want to donate to help out with expenses, travel, equipment, you know, stuff like that, then I definitely appreciate it and you can hit us off at Venmo or PayPal. Thanks a lot. Hey, by the way, we also have a merch store, so check it out. Oh my goodness, it seems like you've reached the end of the video, so make sure you check out some of our other videos, uh, make sure you subscribe, this is your last chance to do so, so thanks a lot, and looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please comment below if you have any questions or issues you'd like me to address. And if you're an activist, the time to make things happen is now.